This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. It's episode 99! Oh my god, we're one away from 100. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everybody. What's going on? It's been a couple of weeks because last week was Easter. And and as I want to do when it's Easter, whoever is supposed to be co-hosting is given the option. Okay, do you do you want to do you want to just go ahead and do it, or do you want to wait till next week? But then you know scheduling. So because while I personally, you know, I am an agnostic atheist, so I don't I don't necessarily celebrate Easter like like religious folk do. And so, but but I always want to keep that open for my co-hosts. That way, you know, hey, you know, you need to do something, you do it. And well, last week, it turned out it surprised me too because uh, we ended up having some sort of cookout over here. So it kind of worked out on both of our ends that way. Uh, and and bear in mind, I'm not religious either, and um, I didn't decline to do the episode for any religious service reasons. It was because right. my family was going to a brunch buffet. Food. So, <laughs> so, and it was like right around the same time as we would normally record. And I'm like, uh, recording or dessert bar? Yeah, which is very understandable. I would do the same thing. <laughs> the choice was obvious. Like, yes. I just. Yeah, so I can't blame you there. I, I would do the same thing. And, and, and in fact, I expect it. <laughs> because. <laughs> Because, because to be fair, Easter is not just about you know the religions or anything. It's also about family. Families, you know, even if you're not religious, you could use it as an excuse. Just go out with your family and just have fun. Because hey, you know, most people aren't working that day. We only hung out with the family who were willing to skip church to go um, eat. Because <laughs> <laughs> because normally my family would do something with our more religious family, and I, we were really surprised this year that nobody was like, "Come to our house for Easter after service, and we're gonna go and make all this elaborate food that we're gonna have a million leftovers of." But no, it was just like, "Hey, we're gonna go to a buffet and fuck any invitation we get." There you go. Oh, but yeah, what? But we we had I think we had like a ham, some stovetop. And my aunt brought over a lime cake. Ooh. Yes, it was good. Very tangy. Mm. I would have it again. <laughs> it was very good. But speaking of desserts, this one I, I wasn't able to put in the news file because it's actually from my local paper. Um, and, it, it, and of course, it has to do with Florida. And this, this boggles me because this actually has to be put into a law. Uh, the headline reads, Florida works to pass Pop-Tart Bill. Let that sink in. Mm, a Pop Pop-Tart Bill? A Pop-Tart Bill. Okay. And, and this first paragraph pretty much will explain everything. It's a Pop-Tart, a flat fruit pastry topped with frosting that almost all kids enjoy. But one Pop-Tart bit into the shape of a gun caused a seven-year-old Maryland boy to be suspended from school and started a new movement in Florida. Dubbed the Pop-Tart Bill, the proposal was created to ease the zero-tolerance school policies that are focused on guns. It specifies that children cannot be punished for brandishing a partially consumed pastry or other food item to stimulate to simulate rather a firearm or a weapon. I'd hate to see them try to stimulate a firearm or a weapon. <laughs> There's more. Yes. The bill also eliminates students from being punished for possessing a toy firearm or weapon made of plastic snapped together building blocks in response to a five-year-old student being threatened with suspension after he made a gun-shaped gun -shaped object rather out of Legos. This it's it's a good step in the right direction. What saddens me is the fact that it it's had just so to... dumb that we need this. Yes. It's like, come on. I mean, I am all for keeping the weapons out of the schools. Fine, you know, you don't, you don't want, you don't want Columbine to happen again. You don't want, you don't want uh, Virginia Tech happening. That's fine. You don't. You, we want to prevent those. I like that. But know the difference between fantasy and reality, and teach your kids the difference between fantasy and reality. You know, and it it, it goes a long way. 
really, it does. I mean, look at us. <laughs> oh. But I, I just had to bring that up because, again, what, it, this, it's, it's the sad state of affairs. This has to be made into a law because it's pretty much going to get passed, I'm, I'm willing to bet. There is actual bipartisan support for this thing in this state, which is amazing. So, yeah. <sighs> Damn. And the other big news, which may or may not be a hoax at this point, we're going we're, we're gonna to find out in the coming days. They found the landfill. The landfill. The landfill with all of those unsold or returned copies of E.T. for the Atari. The urban legend is true. Yes, as far as we know. You know, there are some people questioning it, and I'm questioning a little bit of it myself, but from what it seems so far, it could very well be true. In New Mexico, there is a landfill full of E.T. cartridges and boxes and a random centipede cart, too. <laughs> It's just, it's just E.T., E.T., centipede. What? <laughs> oh, well. God, that was... that. And, and of course, now the AVGN movie is going to be coming out like in the next year, I think. I know I know they're in post-production and, and still working on everything. And that's the basic premise of the whole movie is the whole landfill. So it's like, wait, the movie... Did, 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 some people I, – th I think it was Andrew Dickman on Twitter is like, you know, this could just be a publicity stunt, and, and he might be right. And hey, it might be a publicity stunt for the AVGN movie. That would be cool. Yeah, and you know what? It works. Well, it didn't need to work on me. I'm already wanting to see it, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah, and if you keep up with my site, the day we're recording this is the day that the last part of my Portal 2 Near Blind run goes up, seven parts. And one of my followers said, you know what, that's pretty fast. I'm like, eh, it's just like seven, seven, eight hour run, you know, all told, all together. And, and that's not bad for my first time through. I mean, it's quick and easy to figure out some of the things. Um, and, and of course, at that point, I'd also seen some bits of Spaz Fox's run of Portal 2. And so I remembered a few things out of that, which I do admit during the run. But for the most part, it's pretty blind. And I'd have, and I'd have to say that's... I think that's a good deal. It's definitely longer than the original Portal, and a lot more and a lot more story intensive too. Uh, but if you haven't watched it, go and watch it. You can either watch it on my site rtgomer.com, or they're starting to go up on Nerdvice now. So check them out if you haven't done so. You might like it. <laughs> I hope because uh, it's fun. And there's one there's one part. Oh God, I, I am a little embarrassed about part five because it runs for nearly 90 minutes. And a good chunk of that is because there is one puzzle I absolutely hate because of how you have to solve it. And, and it's just balls difficult. Uh, I don't know why we use balls hard or balls difficult. That, 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 that's, that's a weird one. I guess – I have never heard anybody but you use it. Okay then. So I don't know why I use it. <laughs> Oh, so so besides the going with the family and having the Easter, how how have you been the past couple of weeks, Kat? Oh, I'm okay. I just I had like two conventions in a row, and then like weeks of like really tough stuff to do at work. So I feel like I'm on the brink of exhaustion at all times. But otherwise, I'm doing awesome. Yes. Oh, uh, but but yeah, see, at least you're out there getting stuff done, and and, and you're moving, aren't you? Yes, I'm moving in like three weeks, um, getting getting an apartment with my best friend, which should be totally awesome. Should be. Sweet. Should be. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, I wish I could move. I just I lack the funds to do it. <laughs> I just I, I uh, want to get into a better space and get out of here and just ah. But my yeah. my apartment is going to be so sweet. It's a uh, one bedroom, one loft. And my roommate makes more money, so she's agreed to pay more, oh, like more of the rent to get the loft space, which is really nice. Um, and the the closet in the loft is so big. I'm like, we should turn this into a recording studio. Oh, that so, would be so, so awesome. Seriously, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that we do actually awesome. own too much shit, so uh, we do have to have a proper a proper closet. Yeah. Um, but it would be nice. So, like right now, I'm just in the process of. 
um, buying stuff for the apartment and researching some new stuff. I'm going to need, like, I need a new desk because this desk is too big to come with me. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's stressful, but I'm super stoked. So uh, in a couple weeks, I might have to go silent for a little while just because um, we don't know 1,000% what our internet installation date is going to be. Right. But my roommate's older brother works for Uverse, and that's probably what we're going to get. So oh. whatever we do is at least going to be hooked up correctly. Yes. Uverse, Uverse is good when it comes to their service. So I will give them that. Although there have been times where the connection would sometimes just shit itself when people are trying to stream things on three different things at once. Yeah, well, I don't that's, know if that, that's I, just needing a better router. Well, we got the best router we could get. I don't know if it's the router or if it's just the amount of bandwidth that they're wanting to give us, but uh, but we are also more rural out here too, so that that could also be a thing. Uh, you know, yeah, they're not a big city; I don't need that much bandwidth. Fuck you! We're all we're all streaming Hulu and Netflix and shit. <laughs> because we can't get cable satellite out here. Oh well, we can. We're we're not so rural that we're just you know incapable of getting certain things. But we're finding more and more that online streaming, you know, Netflix, Hulu, it's a lot better on the pocketbook because we had DirecTV for a while. And that was like almost, you know, getting upwards of 200 a month. And it's like, <laughs> no, you know, that 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 mo the extra money that we would save from it can go towards getting you know more clothes for the kids, go towards this over here, that over there. You know, it can go mm -hmm. to other places. So. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, real, real quick, I do, I do have a shout out for this week, and her name is Rachel Goldberg, also known as Fairy God Moose. If you follow her on Tumblr, she is also a member of Nerdvice, and she released, uh, according to Vimeo, just today, uh, two videos, two student films, short films, like five, between five and nine minutes long. Um, one of them is called Try Try Again, and the other one is called Awake. And they're both really good, really short, really sweet, and they they are shot pretty well, especially for you know on a student student film equipment and everything. Um, if you want to find them, the quickest way to do it just go to Vimeo.com, look up uh, Rachel Goldberg, and you should be able to find her. I I think <laughs> I, I'm looking at it now, but I had that up earlier. And if you have trouble looking for that, uh, Fairy God Moose on Tumblr, and I want to say she's also fairy god moose on twitter i don't remember if she has one but i know she's on tumblr that's how i found the videos to begin with so go check her out check out her videos and you know just say hello and you do awesome work and i'm gonna guess you probably don't have a shout out this week um i will give a quick shout out this isn't like a reviewer or anything this is just a a youtube series that i just started watching it's um school of thrones it's a high school version parody of Game of Thrones, and it's pretty funny. And I know at least one person in it, um, so I'm pretty stoked. I've watched the first episode. It was hilarious, um, so I'm going to be watching the other two episodes just to see uh, where they go with it in interpreting the characters and what goes on in the series as set in a high school with drama and clicks and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. And you surprised me this week. You actually have something. <laughs> I, I know. I remembered it at the very last minute. I was like, oh, hey, I could talk about that. There you go. <laughs> but yes, so go go check all of this stuff out and, and let us know how you like it. Uh, but for now, we have the news. We have the actual official news in the, in the file news. And this first one I put in here specifically because for those who don't know if this is your first show, Kat and I are both military brats. And this one comes from CNN.com. The article is pretty lengthy, so I couldn't just slap the article into the file on its own. So it's just a link. You know, why you people need to know that, I don't know, but eh, that's how I work. But it's entitled, A Fatal Weight. Veterans languish and die on a VA hospital secret list. Already I feel my blood pressure starting to rise. At least 40 U.S. veterans died waiting for appointments at the Phoenix Veterans Affairs Healthcare System, many of whom were placed on a secret waiting list. 
It's bad enough you're on a waiting list, but it's even worse when you don't even realize it. The secret list was part of an elaborate scheme designed by Veterans Affairs managers in Phoenix who were trying to hide that 14 to 1600 six sick veterans were forced to wait months to see a doctor, according to a recently retired top VA doctor and several, several even, high-level sources. Why would they be forced to wait months to see a doctor? I mean, unless there is extreme backlog and there's only like one old doctor doing everything, there's no excuse for it. There is just no excuse. None. Ah. For six months, CNN had been reporting on extended delays in healthcare appointments suffered by veterans across the country and who died while awaiting for appointments for appointments and care. But the new revelations about the Phoenix VA are perhaps the most disturbing and striking to come to light thus far. And now I'm questioning, is Phoenix the only one doing this shit? And, and, and what I want to know is why. Why would they do this? It, it's it's uh, ah uh, goddamn you have you, you, you help me out here, cat. Oh, um, God. I'm, I'm trying to like actually flip through a little more of the article and and figure out like what's the cause of this. Yeah. Like, why would all these people not try and see a different doctor or something? Because usually, with like military stuff, you have like Tricare or something that's accepted at multiple kinds of places. So it just makes me wonder, like, why did these patients specifically have to wait? What uh, what was it in, in their situations that caused them to have to wait? Like, was, were, was there, like, limited locations that they could visit with, uh, with the uh, veteran-provided insurance or, um, like, or maybe they needed like to see very specific kinds of specialists, like like cancer doctors or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it I feel like like I just need to know more about this situation because this is really bizarre to me. Like, why is there a secret waiting list? What is that even? Yeah, I, it's it's it. I wish I could see. I'm, I'm looking over the same article at the same time, and I just don't see it. I mean, there there are some. You know, there are some stories about some of them that had died and everything, but I'm not seeing why the list. And and as far as why so many people are waiting for this particular thing, who knows? Maybe – like like you said, maybe it's the only one they have access to for whatever reason, either because of distance or because of speciality. I know for a while my dad had to go down to the VA clinic in Gainesville, which for me is about a good three-hour or so drive. You know, just one way, by the way, and I had to help him drive back because that's the only place he could go and have his eyes checked. And so, you know, to check the eyes, to dilate them, and you know, we have to drive him back. That that could be a system like that, even though we have a military base right up in in Alabama. But you know, whatever, it, it, for whatever reason, that's where he had to go, and. Uh, and this leads to another another train of thought for me is like, what what the hell are we doing with our veterans? I mean, even if this is just some bizarre one-off thing, there are other things that that the government has been doing to just basically give our veterans the boot once they're done serving their country. I mean, I mean they do some. I mean, it's not like they don't give them any. They don't give them anything. They do have the retirement, as far as I know. You know, universally. I know my dad has it. Um, I'm sure your parent uh, – is it your mom or your – was it your mom both. or your dad? Both. Okay, I'm sure both of your parents. I'm assuming they're retired. Yeah. They, they have that. So – but at the same time, yeah, they have that retirement, but is it enough? I know for us here, especially since there are six kids, four of which my parents are legally responsible for, it's not enough. And I'm sure there are veterans out there that are even worse situations than this. Than what we are. I mean, we're not in a bad situation. It's just money is really tight. But there are veterans out there that, like, like Forrest Gump. You know, you look back on that, you see how the veterans were treated. You know, even after the Vietnam War. You know, at least as portrayed in the movie, which of course based on reality. 
I'm rambling a little bit. <laughs> Point <clears throat> is, we need to treat our veterans better than what we do. You know, I, I mean, if you if I, I remember uh, somebody might have been my mother or my father talking about that they. I want to say someone in Congress – I don't remember if it was the Senate or, 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 or whoever – was voting down like a, a cost of living raise for for the military. I want to say that. I Again, I'm going by memory, so if I am wrong, please correct me. Uh, and, it, and it's not even just veterans. It's just the military in general. From what I understand, being a soldier is one of the worst paid professions right, up the, right down there with like teaching, if I remember correctly. I, again, if I'm wrong, please correct me because I want to be accurate on this. And and what really galls me about the fact that it is one of the worst paid professions is the fact that if you're going to war, which hey, we're a country that likes to have war. We're good at it. You know, just, you know, like George Carlin has said. You know, you got people, men and women going out there putting their lives on the line. I think they deserve a lot more than what they get paid. There are military – there are soldiers on food stamps. That should say something, and soldiers shouldn't have to be on food stamps. Honestly, I don't think nobody should have to be on food stamps because if you know everybody was paid a living wage, we wouldn't need food stamps. I don't think, at least not under what should be normal circumstances. I've been rambling. Kat, I'm sure you have some thoughts in your head. Uh, only a few. I just feel like this situation is very like this this particular situation um, in where was this Phoenix? Mm -hmm. I feel like this is really confusing because it seems like you you can't be limited to the hospital you go to, even if if um, even if your insurance isn't covered at another place. If you are having enough trouble or if you are in enough pain you will go to any lengths to be seen by a doctor yeah um so there's definitely something very weird going on where these people were were somehow told or under the impression that they could only be treated at a va facility um or you know that they you know other people wouldn't treat them or something and this is just very very strange yeah um and and it's really terrible because we we do sort of neglect a lot of our veterans. We don't. I feel like it's weird because I don't think we hear as much about a lot of the the older veterans nowadays. Yeah. Because we were inundated with news about veterans coming out of you know the more recent wars with PTSD, and these are the things that are sort of on our mind now, and we're I don't think we're paying as much attention to. The veterans who have already put in their service and you know like this is sort of the republican mentality of seeing people who aren't working but um still earning money as freeloaders and people who are retired or sort of seen as like freeloaders and and you know don't really deserve our time of day and this is sort of this mentality of well you know they're not serving our country now what do we care yeah it, it, it's it, I, I I'm thinking a similar mentality to the pregnant woman, you know, you know, hey, I, George Carl, I'm going to refer to George Carlin again. If you're preborn, you're fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. Yeah. Same kind of mentality there. <laughs> oh, the, like the, we're we're all for being patriotic and saying support our troops and until we actually have to support our troops. Yeah, as in. Yeah, that little bit of money that comes out of your paycheck every week or two weeks or however long or however often you get paid, guess where that can go? That can go to supporting our troops and supporting the people who do need it. Among them are the troops that have come home, that have retired or, or got out of the military somehow and did it honorably. I'm not talking about the guys that were so, you know, that were so, you know, that they got that got kicked out with with, you know, things like oh, they 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 kept disobeying orders and they 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 were horrible soldiers. No, I'm talking about the guys that actually went in there. They put in their all and they they deserve the retirement checks. Really, they deserve it, and they deserve to keep getting those retirement checks because hi, especially now with with us sending troops everywhere, they deserve it. They they could be shot at or blown up at any point. I have a cousin who until recently was over in Afghanistan. 
some and and if he was to retire within the next two or three years and somebody were to try to tell him he doesn't deserve it that was never in a war that never been in a battle zone i'm gonna look at that motherfucker i'm gonna say okay you go over there you run your the risk of being shot at or blown up every day for a good year and then come back and let me tell you that you don't deserve any extra money for it for whatever purpose because being in a war zone fucks you up it's just i don't even need the experience to be able to understand yeah it's gonna fuck you up especially if you have to kill other people in self-defense that, that that that's you know you're gonna need something and in you know what some jobs may not be you may not be able to work certain jobs because of ptsd or you might you know you, know, you might have lost a leg or or an arm or something and you wouldn't be able to work certain other jobs it's it's you know, you you have to have a way of maintaining, you know, of of actually living, if you are rendered unhirable due to being in a war. I believe that's what a retirement check is supposed to help, you know, help alleviate. There, it's like, yeah, I have an income, I I'm too fucked up to work anywhere else, but at least I'm not going to die in the streets. That's 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 my take on it. Ah. Oh. So yes, I I've been ranting a bit too long. Unless and if you've got a couple of other thoughts, no, uh, we this, can we can move on. We've talked about this too long. Yes, yeah, we have. <laughs> we really have. So uh, speaking of bizarre, this one is another kind of funny bizarre, but but not as not as rage worthy and and leading into a big rant, big big uh, ramble ranting there. Uh, Thirty five tons of Little Debbie snack cakes were scattered along Georgia Highway early Friday morning after a tractor trailer overturned. The accident occurred at 3 a.m., leaving a sugary tail trail of cosmic cupcakes and cloud cakes beside I-75 in Bartow County. Multiple vehicles were involved in the accident and victims were taken to a hospital. The road was reopened after a four hour delay. 3 a.m. I'm thinking, OK. Somebody uh, uh, being somebody who has been a professional driver, I'm willing to bet 3 a.m. It is very hard, even even if, you know, your schedule kind of forces you to go at night, you can get a little used to it, I guess. But it is difficult to stay awake if you're driving overnight, even if you even if you sleep all day and you're rested, freshed up, it's difficult. It really is. And so I'm thinking this guy might have been in that same position. What he should have done was just stop and tell his dispatcher, look, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not feeling it. You know, it, it might be a little dangerous. And and also, for all I know, he could have been trying to get to a spot. OK, I need to put down. I'm getting too tired. But accident happened. So so it's either that or for, you know, whatever luck, 3 a.m., some dumbass tries to cut him off and, you know, and, and causes him to hit the brakes really fast. And oh. Overturned. Oh. What's important here isn't who's at fault. What's important here is our loss of cupcakes and cloud cake. <laughs> I somehow knew you were going to go there. <laughs> I was going to do it myself. But like, well, no, wait, 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 wait. Cat's going to do it. And you know what? You proved me right. <laughs> it's really great that nobody died because if somebody had died by little Debbie's, that would be the saddest thing. That would. I don't think it, I could not even Debbie like from all. overeating little Debbie's, like physically killed by suffocating under little Debbie's. It'd be yeah. so sad. That would be like, oh, 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 worst but, uh, death ever. Yes, I don't know if it's the worst, but it's definitely up there with them, among them. Oh lordy, uh, and our next one. Uh, where is this one out of, uh, want to try and say, oh, hey, we're going back to Arizona. <laughs> oh. Parents of the students who were exposed to a raunchy performance from the musical Rent during a high school music festival at Arizona State University are upset that their teens were not warned about the explicit content of the show. It's Rent. Andrew McConaughey of Mesa said his 17-year-old daughter and rows and rows, quote-unquote, of students filed out of the Gamage Auditorium last week when a song from the show was performed during a larger concert showcasing the university's various musical ensembles. The university's lyric opera theater program performed a song called 
Lavi Bohem, I think is how it's pronounced. Lavi Bohem. Lavi Bohem, thank you. I've seen it, but the pronunciation is get it away from me. Which high school students said was full of sexual overtones and included a woman mooning the audience. Oh my god, female ass. Oh. McConaughey said his daughter was embarrassed and shocked. If they were exposed to this anywhere else, police would be there arresting them for public indecency, he said. Again. It's rent. Now, if this was, you know, 20 years ago when, when Googling and Internet searching, you know, was, was not as far-fetched. Granted, it Also, was, before there was a major motion picture. Yeah, you know, if, if, if information was limited, I, I might uh, – I would still feel the same. Be like, okay, it's a play, whatever, you know. You're going to be exposed to this. These these teenagers, like, seven, you know, 16, 17, 18-year-olds, I'm willing to bet they watch porn. They get porn somehow. So this should not be shocking to them. Should not. I don't think at least. Because, okay, woman mooning the audience. Oh, hey, ass. I've seen ass before. It's really weird. It looks weird without a dick going into it, though. Huh. But <laughs> even then, even if it was shocking, it's like, okay, you know what? It's shocking. Great. You're going to remember it. Good for you. <laughs> I mean, and that that's – I mean, why do you think we have – productions like hair hair is remembered because a lot of the controversy that went around it the show itself the the, the theater show it's kind of more of just a series of vignettes the movie put it more into a cohesive plot but just that infamy with places wanting to outright ban it because oh my god nudity and ban it and burning the american flag made people think okay maybe i want to look at this see this for myself and boom there you go ah it's just just ah. Really, really, people, it, it's a musical. It's a theater. It's fucking rent. No, Do your and seriously, research. these are the parents complaining. I have I didn't see anything in this article about any of the students there complaining. Yeah, it's just eh. because this is this is nothing worse than what your kids can watch on TV. Mm hmm. This is nothing worse than what your par what your children can get into into a movie theater. Your your kids, if they're above, they can see a PG thirteen movie with much much more indecent content. Yeah, and keep in mind, Rent the film version. I I want to say it's rated R. I think. Uh, let me let me. I actually have it on iTunes. I could probably pull it up real quick. And no, actually, Rent is PG thirteen. <laughs> They they probably had to cut the word fuck out of there a couple times, but otherwise, yeah. So it's like you know whatever. It, it, it's parents do your homework, do your research, and oh my god, it's female ass. You know where else you can see female ass on the internet, where you should have looked to get the information for the show. And ah. and so and so this is this is at a high school music festival. Mm -hmm. So if if any of those children have actually, I don't know, watched a music video, they have already seen worse than than than, you know, somebody getting mooned and sexual overtones. Yeah. Like seriously. For some reason I'm thinking Kanye West right off the bat. <laughs> I've never watched a video of his in my life, so I don't know for sure. I could be wrong, but he was the first person I thought of. Who knows? Oh, and speaking of things that are stupid and silly, a Portland woman whose hair had reached the small of her back since childhood is suing Walmart and a shampoo maker for $10,000, claiming her hair became so tangled after using the product she was forced to cut most of it off. For those who didn't hear that, both elbows hit my desk, and I double face palmed. So this is a woman who used a shampoo, and it didn't work out well for her. So she's suing Walmart. Yeah. And and the shampoo maker, but she's suing Walmart because her shampoo didn't work out so well. Why would you sue Walmart? 
<sighs> Jennifer Faye suit states she bought a bottle of Equate Everyday Clean Dandruff Shampoo. Well, there's your first problem right there. You bought Equate. So there's no reason to sue them. You're, you know, you bought Equate. You know, all bets are off. Uh, at a Portland Walmart on October 8th, her hair became irreparably tangled within seconds of massaging it into her scalp for the first time. Uh-huh, I'm sure. No, this is this is not Equate. As as much as I will poke fun at Equate and and the hair it is ugh, it's a horrible brand, but if that's all you can afford, that's all you can afford. I understand that. Still a horrible brand. It's not their fault if you don't take care of your hair. And if you can't remove the knots for whatever reason, then you have issues that Equate is not responsible for. You have issues that Walmart is not responsible for. Walmart is responsible for a lot of horrible things nowadays. This is not one of them. What kills me is that is that okay, so if you have the ability to hire an attorney and go through the legal process to sue a company that's not responsible for your idiocy you have every capability to get on the fucking internet and look up a fucking review yes there's also that and even if even let's say you don't have the capability at home go to the goddamn library or or better yet you know you who knows this this lady she might be able to hijack a kid off the street for like five seconds look up google because pretty much every kid has a smartphone nowadays. You can ask any employee in that building for their opinion on a product, and they'll probably give it to you straight. If you say, yeah. hey, is this shit any good? They'll probably say, no, it fucking sucks. It's Equate. Yeah. Go get some fucking Suave or something. Yeah, but Here, because I will you give decide, you $5. Because you decide that you are too cheap to spend a little bit more money on a dandruff fucking shampoo... You are going to sue somebody for $10,000 because you had to get your hair cut afterwards because you can't deal with it. Like, this is just a uh, crybaby of the week. Yes, definitely. Oh, it's like, really? And and, and here's her, 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 her list of reasons for seeking the $10,000. For her past, present, and future physical and emotional pain and suffering, anxiety, humiliation, and embarrassment, expenses for replacement hair... Replacement hair? You just grow it out. Yes, it's going to take a while, but you just grow it out. From The article says nothing about whether or not you have issues growing hair, along with diminished and lost wages. Um, what, because you, you had to call out because you were too embarrassed to go into work because you had to cut your hair. Now look, now look, I don't know if our listeners have any kind of length in their hair, but if your hair gets tangled, there is a certain length to which you, you should, you know, if it's irreparably tangled, you can cut it off to a point. And then the rest of it should be fairly easy to untangle if you're willing to spend more than $3.44 on a bottle of shampoo. So it's not like this woman absolutely had to, like, shave her head and go buy a wig because her hair was so damaged. There's definitely ways... That, and, it, of course, it doesn't say that she had to shave her head or anything like that. So what I'm saying is there are attractive short haircuts. And if you are so humiliated by getting your hair cut short, then you buying a wig is not should not have to cost everybody else. That's a fucking self-image problem. Yeah, and you need to get help, not money. Even if that money would get help, don't get it that way. You have a, you, you know, apparently you have a job, so save up, go get help. You know, and then there are doctors that work on a sliding scale. There you go. Hmm. Oh, and now this one, I believe this is one of the ones I had saved over from the previous show. I do want to touch this. We've got 20 minutes left in the show. We can tackle this and the next one. Here we go. Governor Phil Bryant this afternoon signed the Mississippi Religious Freedom Restoration Act into law. Keep in mind, this is a law as far as I know as of this recording. I have not heard anything about this being repealed or anything. The highly controversial law will allow anyone to discriminate against anyone else in the name of religious liberty. 
let me repeat that. It will allow anyone to discriminate against anyone else in the name of religious liberty and places the rights and desires of the faithful over those with no religious beliefs. In short, it is a license to discriminate and likely will, will land the state in court. I hope so. Also, by the way, those with no religious beliefs. Hi! Yeah, I'm not going to Mississippi because if somebody beats the shit out of me for being an agnostic atheist, I'm not going to be able to legally do anything. Of course, you know, if it hasn't happened by the time this recording has happened, you know somebody is going to go over there and and pull some bullshit and claim it in the name of Islam or Buddha or 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 I could even go over there discriminate against flat-chested women in the name of Mamaris. See 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 religious freedom I think this is what this guy does not understand. What he doesn't understand is religious freedom is for all religions to be practiced freely without government intervention with with obvious exceptions like if you like if your religious ceremony involves gang raping somebody yeah i think the government should step in send the police in that is one thing but if it's not hurting anybody doesn't matter it shouldn't matter and you don't need laws to say well we need religious liberty you already have it what you really want to do and the article even states as such that i that I mentioned right at the first paragraph, all you really want to do is discriminate against people who are not white, upstanding Christians. I, and, and I say white because I'm pretty sure they would want – he would want to find a way to discriminate against people who are not white. I, that, and that might be a slippery slope argument on my part. I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh… And, and a little more detail on it. The bill could allow a pharmacist to refuse to sell contraception to a particular person and could allow a child to tell a fellow student perceived as being gay they're going to hell and cite the law as the right to constitutionally bully and harass them. The bill could also be used by a corporation to refuse to pay for certain medical procedures via its health insurance program like abortion or birth control, as in the Hobby Lobby case currently before the Supreme Court. At least currently, as terms of that article, I don't know if they've have 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 you heard anything about that one since this article came out? No, no, nothing, nothing really new. Okay, so it's still before the Supreme Court as of this recording, as far as we know. Uh, and of course, who else was standing next to him as he signed it? But Tony Perkins, the head of the certified anti-hate gay hate group, the Family Research Council. Yeah. And of course, all this is being done in, in the name of protection and allowing people to uh, express themselves. And they, they use kids a lot and they use putting religion back in schools and, and letting prayer be in schools, which was never in danger to begin with. And so this is like the excuses that they're using to get vapid sheep into um, following this ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. Um, just creating this idea that we all know isn't true, that religion is somehow, or more specifically, that Christianity is somehow at war with with some invisible enemy that doesn't want them to have prayer wherever they want. Yeah. let me. I'm, I'm going to say this again. I say again because I know I've said it elsewhere. I may have even said it on the show before. There is no war on Christianity. If there is any war involving Christianity, it is from these these fundamentalist Bible humping Christians that want to push their morals, their values on everybody else, whether or not they believe it. And it's not just the harmless ones. Oh, you shouldn't curse. Oh, you shouldn't lie. You know, things that most people could agree on. We're talking things like, oh, you're gay. You're going to hell. You shouldn't be gay. Or no, you shouldn't drink. You shouldn't be allowed to buy alcohol on Sunday. Or oh, you're a woman, so you should be in the home, chained to the stove, and popping out babies every nine months. I don't know if they would go that extreme, but who knows? They're as quiverful. Mm. 
what a war on Christianity looks like is when you go to nations where they actually arrest, beat, and murder people who are Christian for being Christian in a primarily other religion kind of country. That is what a war on Christianity looks like. Yeah. A war on Christianity is not allowing people to have the same rights as Christians. That's not the same thing. It right. is not the same thing. It Just isn't. because your religion is kind is is like what the majority mm -hmm. for now doesn't mean that people like allowing people to have different thoughts and opinions and they're allowed to assert them in the same way as you that is not an attack on your religion that is actual freedom you don't recognize freedom because your religion has tried to destroy everything else literally everything else yeah or or at least people in the name of your religion, whichever way you want to look at it, either the religion itself, people fighting in the name of said religion, maybe both. Point is, this, this, this war on Christianity you guys are trying to whip up here in this country, there is none. Just no. And this is, this is just a huge distraction from the real problems in this country, and we're just – making up ones that don't really exist. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't have problems and that there aren't people who are legitimately threatened by other religions, mm -hmm. um, but these tend to be so few and so far between, and they're making it look like a fucking epidemic of people having their civil rights violated. So, and, and, and of course, this is all just, you know, it's just this bullshit to allow people to discriminate against one another based on quote unquote religious freedom which is really just i don't like them whatever so i don't want to have to serve them even though in your in your you know whatever there's there's you know people are going to use this to discriminate people with against people with tattoos and mohawks and piercings and not to mention the obvious you know L the lgbt community and and race or or perceived religions you know like oh there's a there's a dark guy he must be muslim or something you yeah. know when the person is like i don't know indian or something you know it's it's going to be used based on perceived notions about other people and and if you've lived on a planet at all you know that you're not always right about what you think about other people that's right so like, you don't look at a person, like, say, if you had a guy who looked a little tan, like maybe he was Middle Eastern, you know, maybe the natural assumption is that he's Islamic, but what if he's not? So right. now you're discriminating against somebody for absolutely no reason. Exactly. It, it's just, just, at least, guys, guys, if you're, if, if you can get this to some of these people in the higher ups, I want them to hear this. Maybe they are high NSA. Uh, maybe they are already hearing this as we record this, but yeah, just come out and be honest. That That's the one thing I wish politicians would do more often is just come out and be honest. There is a reason why it is stereotypical for a politician to be a damn liar because that's all they fucking do. Okay, not all, but you get my point. I mean they, they have sex too, you know, not with their wives or husbands. No, sometimes... That's also what they do. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, they're humans. They are human beings. And, 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 and just politicians, please, stop it. Uh, personally, I think we should gut the entire government and start over. You know, obviously, peacefully, you know, you know, peacefully vote everybody out and vote in some fresh blood. We need fresh blood. Much like vampires... We need fresh blood. Yes. Oh, so now I'm going to skip down to the story under the next one. Still staying in Mississippi, and I can tie it in with the whole religious freedom argument because this would be one of the ways that, that they would want to use this religious freedom. The recently adopted sex education curriculum in Mississippi includes a lesson comparing sexually active teenagers to dirty chocolate. Dirty chocolate. Okay. Dirty chocolate, for, for the record, really sounds like a great porn name. Yes. There's probably a porn star out there called Dirty Chocolate. <laughs> oh, I mean, if there's not, there will be now. Yes. Yes. Yes, there will be. 
They're using a peppermint patty to show that a girl is no longer clean or val valuable after she's had sex, that she's been used, one parent, Marie Bernard, was quoted as saying. That shouldn't be the lesson we send kids about sex. This parent gets it. I like her. Bernard told the Times, who reported the news story, that the lesson part that part of the curriculum at her daughter's school in Tun Tunica, Tunica, whatever, s involved students unwrapping the chocolate, then seeing how dirty it would get as it was passed around between students. In the, according to the Times, the state requires individual districts to choose between programs only teaching abstinence or a hybrid man method, abstinence plus, which includes some lessons on contraceptive methods. Bernard told the Times she and a group of other parents lobbied their children's district to include contraception in their license plans, which prompted some residents to call them the sex moms. Oh, that sounds like a premise for a it, porno right there. Right? Like MILF Central. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> oh, but the whole abstinence only sex education. It, it, it's, it's, you know, nine times out of ten, not only is it to keep kids from having sex and having control of their bodies what else is underlying that oh wait what is that what we just talked about the last story oh yeah religion because and, i mean they're, and they're... also it doesn't work right uh what what state is it that has one of the highest rates of teen pregnancy uh i i think mississippi is up there i it, think I, I i don't know where it is but i know it's there because yeah. the less you educate people, the dumber they are. These, the, this is how the universe works. Yes. Oh God, it's it's just just really, and I and I am very very glad that there are some parents there. They're saying, "Ha ha no 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 no." You need to teach them more about this stuff because we're tired of our future generations popping babies out when they're not prepared for them. We're tired of this. You know, kids are going to, you know, I, and I say kids, teenagers, they're going to go out. They're going to have sex anyway. Whether you teach that, whether you tell them to, you know, the abstinence only or whether you give them the knowledge to arm themselves with condoms and contraceptives or what have you, you know, they're going to go do it anyway. If you teach them, OK, you should only wait till you get married. One of these days, they're, it's going to be all pent up. They're going to go fuck all over the place and then wonder why they're popping out a baby in nine months. Because nobody explained this shit to them. And then you have to have that uncomfortable conversation about abortion. So yes. it, to me, it just saves so much more time and energy to just teach kids how to put on a condom. Like, like, first off, first off, this is your only opportunity to get all of these generations of people sitting down and paying attention. So... I, you know what? If you're going to be like, don't have sex until you get married, fine, whatever. I, dis I disagree, but whatever. But why wouldn't you take active minds who are in the process of learning and they're all mentally in the zone to learn and tell them how to put on a condom? Like, yeah. like because it's one of those many, many things that unless you teach it, you are going to have to learn it the hard way, much like doing your taxes and writing a check. These are not things that they teach you in school, but are very actually practical and useful and necessary in real life. Yeah. Well, OK, OK. The taxes, I, I can agree with. I actually learned how to write a check in school somehow. I learned it in the fucking Girl Scouts. Well, I was never in the Girl Scouts, so <laughs> of course I'm not a girl. I don't identify as one either. So it's, it's you know, but point is we both learned it at different times and that's the thing and of course the way technology is going yeah yeah who's going to write checks anymore because uh, we it's just true. i don't <laughs> <laughs> but but nevertheless you're going to have to write one eventually why not why isn't this included in our school curriculum you know teaching kids how to do this stuff yeah so it it just makes sense to me to say hey what you do is your choice and if your religion says this then and that's what you should do if that's what you want to do. But listen, since we're all here, let's talk about some practicality issues. Yes. Here's how you do this. Bam. Yes. But but people are like so fucking close minded about it. They're like, well, if if you show a child how to do it, they're going to want to do it. I'm like, well, well, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to disable all of your home access to uh, to the Internet because you can learn how to make bombs on the Internet. But not everybody goes out and makes bombs. Yeah, I'm just saying. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and even without internet access for porn, guess what? I'm pretty sure your parents have a stash somewhere. I'm, I would assume most parents do. I know I'm going to be one of those parents when I have a kid someday. And you know what? Kid can sneak in there. Ooh, what's this? Oh, hey, this looks fun. Ooh, I didn't know that thing stretched that far. <laughs> I'll leave it so... to your imagination which thing it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it just like the idea that that people don't want this stuff taught in school is just it's so ridiculous because ignorance really does breed more ignorance and people they they don't want their kids going out and getting pregnant at 17 yeah. but they're breeding an environment that does it and it and it all on the grounds of religion yeah which is fucking ridiculous because every every fucking study out there says if you teach kids about it, you will have safer, less costly results. And, exactly. And, and let's face it, a pack of condoms is way cheaper than a fucking baby while your child is still in fucking high school. Yeah, it's it's cheaper than even an abortion. You know, you 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 want to go down the you want to go down the thing. You know, you have having the baby. 18 years of paying and, and taking care of this uh, of this life form that you pushed out of you. Then you have abortion, which is quick. And the last time I know of somebody having one, it costs several hundred dollars. Or, or if you want to be really dangerous, you could just get a coat hanger. But we don't want to do that. And then you have the condoms or, or other birth control, which is relatively cheaper. And uh, I don't know if a lot of health departments still do this, but you could probably go get some free birth control. I know. I know. For a while, you could at the health department, you know, close to where I am. You could go get it, like, get like some free condoms, and there you go, which was pretty cool, you know. So yeah, there are there are ways you can arm yourself if you decide, hey, you know what, I want to have sex, and 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 I found a willing partner, and we don't want to worry about popping babies out or anything. So, so you know. So really, kudos to this mom. Uh, and and all these other parents, the the sex moms or whatever, who who actually give a shit about their children. Because if you're gonna go out there and you're gonna say I have to protect my child from this information, you don't really love your child because you are not preparing them for the real world. Right. And that's one. And and speaking of children not prepared for the real world, there's we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to get to this one thing because I've been wanting to talk about it. Oh, uh, in in our file, it's only a link. But uh, dozens of teenagers have been tweeting bomb jokes to American Airlines. Why would you do this? Because young people are stupid. Yeah. And, and that's all I can think is that young people are stupid and they don't understand gravity of situations. They, they think that that they can just do or say whatever they want because mommy has always told them that they're such a special child and they think it's funny and so when all of their information is passed on to the fbi and they're going to be sitting there in tears because they now have a case file mm -hmm. no shits will be given by me that is for certain yeah i mean and it all started with a dutch teenager identified only as sarah who tweeted a threat at american airlines hello my name is uh, whoever i'm from afghanistan i'm a part of al-qaeda on june 1st i'm going to do something really big bye yeah, you you hear that from somebody claiming to be from Al Qaeda? Red flags are gonna go up, cause um you know let's see for all you kids who oh god there are kids that may not fully understand, Al Qaeda is a terrorist group. For those who don't know, wait if there are kids listening to this that didn't know this beforehand, okay kudos to the parents. <laughs> oh. She she promptly made the account private and insisted it was all a joke, saying, I'm so stupid, I'm scared. But not before American reported her name and IP address to the authorities. And she was arrested. Why, yeah. And then you would think, knowing that, you'd think that would deter other teenagers. You would think. But then you have other ones that, that go off, that, that are even more, that, that, God. Okay, example. Uh... Let's see. Um, a user by the name of Aldo Ferns uh, tweeted, "The bomb goes off in three hours." At American Air, by the way. It's like, it's like d d you, you, it, it, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you moron. I mean, at least give the girl credit. She didn't say what it was going to be. Is just do something really big, and 
something that vague was enough to set them off? What makes you think outright stating that you have a bomb planted somewhere, even if you really don't, is going to work any better for you? Especially, is... there, there, yes. there appears to be no indication that it is a joke, by the way. At least when I'm joking about something on Twitter or, or, or Tumblr or someplace that is primarily text-based, I put in some kind of indication that, hey, this is a joke. B T W L O L. Like <laughs> these are kids, a lot of kids who perhaps didn't grow up with enough of 9/11 on their television every 24 hours uh, for like a year after it happened, and they don't really understand or care about the implications of a plane crashing. Yeah. So so they think that, oh, hey, this girl did it and she got in trouble. I'm going to stick up for her by making the same stupid fucking mistake. And I won't get in trouble because... And then they have this mentality that they're somehow, uh, you know, you know, there's some sort of... That, 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 <sighs> that they're, like, invulnerable to the consequences of their actions because they don't understand the gravity of what's going on. They're too fucking young and too fucking dumb to, to really, to get it. So you got all these dumb young people who think they can just literally do whatever they want because it's the internet and it's not real life. And, uh, and they are going to have to deal with the consequences of their actions and their parents are probably going to sue or something. But, Jesus fucking Christ, kids today be so dumb. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's even been one, I mean, and, and this goes kind of bit into some sort of fandom drama, but there's been one guy uh, whose name I will not state on here, but those who are listening and know who he is know who I'm talking about. He would sit there and he would stalk other, uh, like, like some internet personalities, female internet personalities, ask them, hey, can you burp on camera? And then when they inevitably say, well, no, that's just weird, he, he would threaten to rape them. Yeah, I got one of those. Ah, uh, yeah, see? See? See, yeah, yeah. I yeah, didn't you... get the rape threats. I just got the creep. Yeah. Yeah, this is the same guy. This is the same guy. He, he, he's threatened to rape. He threatened to rape, like, several people I was friends with. and Well, was friends with, still am friends with. But, um, but then... What 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 was interesting was how he considered it. Was he added that person, you know, you know, rep that replied that person on Twitter with the the text emote rapes you, and and that was it. But at the same time, you still have to take it seriously because he lived close enough to one of these contributors that she was legitimately scared, and the cops ended up getting involved with this guy. And, and 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 I think I think there was one other guy too, who kept stalking. So, so the point is, yeah, just because it's online and a lot of digital doesn't mean it does not have consequences in meat space. Just saying. Meat space. Yes. Yeah, I prefer and, to call and, it meat space. <laughs> and and honestly, I feel like this is just such a typical thing of the the current generation of young people, who they just. They honestly don't fathom the consequences of their actions because because for them, the internet is a playground. It's where they go to socialize and have fun and network. And they they like literally like the 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 next generation of people after the millennials, Generation Z or the iGen or whatever they're going to end up calling themselves. This is a generation of kids who literally grew up with the internet. They've grown up with Facebook. They've maybe not with Facebook, but you know, more, more or less, like they've yeah. been, they've been on the computer their whole lives. They're, they're very good with this sort of thing. Um, so they, I guess they kind of feel like it's their playground. It's their space. And, uh, and they should be able to do whatever they want because that's the mentality that they have. And that's not the way the world works. And there will never be enough, shit going on in the news and never enough NSA spying stories to make kids understand that it is n not a playground. It is not necessarily a safe place. And in that the stuff that you do impacts real life. There are never enough stories about cyberbullying, you know, where kids kill themselves. We don't hear about it as many times as it happens. Mm -hmm. And so true. people still think they can say or do whatever they want without consequences. And you just can't. 
And until you fucking learn that, you fucking deserve everything you get. Brahmin, I am not going to argue with that. And, and one way to help drive that point home, I, I, I take I, – I generally have this thing whenever somebody – when they're talking about doing something offline, they say real life, and it's like, no, it's all real life. It's just you're using the internet to discuss things with other people. There are still real people on the other end of that. It's just – it's still real life, and and I think that's part of where this whole disconnect comes from. It's like, oh, it's not real life. It's just the internet. Real life is what I see here, even though you know you just told somebody that they should go get raped and jump off the Brooklyn Bridge or something like that. Yes, I know that's extreme, and and that person could probably be sitting there in the fetal position crying her eyes out. You know that that's a real world effect. There, that is an, an effect of a real, you know, of a real person being told that they obviously have issues, and all you did was trigger the the, the horrible things going on in their mind. So no, I, I I I don't differentiate between internet and real life. That's why I call it meat space because you know we're meat, we're bags of meat walking around. So that that that. That that bit of terminology change, I think, would be good. You know, don't refer to it as real life. It's all real life. Use you know cyberspace, meet space, or whatever. Just real life. To me, it also sounds just really stupid too, because it's all real life. But on that note, we're gonna have to get out of here. We did go over a little bit on time, and unlike one of my most recent episodes of constructive deconstruction, it is more than just a couple of minutes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Uh, or at least it feel, at least it uh, it appears to be that way. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, Kat, if we want to find you on social media and the like, where can we find you? You can find me over um, on Facebook.com under Nervous Cat and on uh, on Twitter, um, which I don't really use that often, which is probably a bad example. But I'm at Labyrinth Cat, and then you can also find me on my other show, Nerds of the Third Power. Uh, we're going to have a really awesome special episode coming up. Uh, next week, so definitely check it out on That Guy with the Glasses under the podcast tab. What? And you're also on What the Fuck, aren't you? Yes, I am, but I don't remember any like linkage or website stuff for that. So. Well, you can find What the Fuck as well as some of my other wonderful shows and productions at rtgomer.com, which, oh, by the way, you can also find uh, What the Fuck on 1201beyond.com. You know, just to make sure that they get their proper shout out too. But yes, rtgomer.com is where you can find me. You can also find my stuff on nerdvice.com. If you want to find me on the social medias, I am on Twitter, I'm on Tumblr under gomer21xx. And if you like the shows that I do, this show, my other two podcasts, and the Let's Plays that I've been doing along with other projects, uh, and you want to help support the show, go over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. I did rearrange the reward tiers a little bit, so if you only can afford like a dollar a month to throw my way, it, it, it does go. And and through Patreon, I was able to make a really good investment on Fraps, and so my Let's Play videos are going to be a lot better in quality. <laughs> uh, and, and also, if you want some really great artwork, I've got to, I've got to toss out one for my girlfriend, Becky. Uh, she does artwork. She's done artwork for a couple of my more recent Let's Plays. Um, She's going to be working on new artwork for all of the podcasts and everything. And if you want to throw money at her for commissions or whatever, check out her stuff at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. So that would be awesome. Throw money at her. She could use it. And the artwork is awesome. Uh, and she does have a level where, where if you pay her a certain amount, she will do a 30-second animation. Keep in mind, she is an award-winning animator. <laughs> oh, so... Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.